everyone on federal death row was convicted of killing someone, their victims often suffering brutal, painful deaths. The dead included children, bank workers and prison guards. There are 47 inmates currently on federal death row. All the 47 inmates are male. There are 20 white men currently on federal death row, 19 black men, 7 Latino and 1 Asian. Views of capital punishment, though, are shifting. One recent report found people of color are overrepresented on death rows nationwide. Some 40% of federal death row inmates are black, compared with about 13% of the U.S. population. With growing scrutiny of who gets sentenced to die and why, support for the death penalty has waned, and fewer executions are done overall. Robert Bolden was born in Stephenville, Canada, in 1963, Stephenville a city on the west shore of Newfoundland, south of Corner Brook. Its population is currently around 6,000. Convicted in slaying of bank guard in 2002. In the afternoon of October 7, 2002, Robert Bolden, Dominic Price and Cortez Edwards attempted to rob a Bank of America branch in St. Louis, Missouri. Bolden had concocted a plan for the robbery which he discussed with Price earlier that day. According to the plan, Robert Bolden would use a handgun to disarm the bank's security guard and then he and Price would hold the guard hostage, get the money, and drive away in Bolden's car. At some point during the day Bolden recruited Edwards to assist in the robbery. Robert Bolden needed $2,000 to pay his rent, which he could not afford, and thought if he rob a bank, his rent problems be over. Robert Bolden, Price, and Edwards drove to a parking lot near the bank and got out of the car. Although Bolden had purchased a nylon stocking cap to conceal his identity, he did not wear a mask. When the security guard, Nathan Lay, came outside, Bolden approached, with Price and Edwards following 15 to 20 feet behind him. Bolden stopped a few feet away from Mr. Lay and the two men exchanged words. Bolden then pointed his handgun at Mr. Lay. A brief struggle ensued after Mr. Lay reached for the gun but Bolden was able to fire it, shooting Mr. Lay in the jaw. As Mr. Lay fell, Bolden stepped backward and fired another shot, this time into Mr. Lay's head. Mr. Lay died from the second gunshot. Bolden, Price, and Edwards fled from the scene. However, several bystanders witnessed the incident and were able to provide a description of Bolden, and his vehicle to the police. Also, the police gathered Deanna evidence from clothing found at and near the scene that they linked to Bolden and his accomplices. Robert Bolden was arrested that evening. The jury found Bolden guilty and sentenced him to death. While he anticipates appeals decisions in his struggle against execution, he's also gone to court to secure much better access to sunlight and books, and fought to be permitted to have an MP3 player in his cell. Bolden was sentenced to death by a U.S. federal jury in 2006. He's been on federal death row ever since awaiting the outcomes of various appeals and court battles moving through the American legal system. The case worked its way up to the Supreme Court of Canada, which dominated the two may only be extradited if they wouldn't face the death penalty. Most national death row prisoners are put at the federal penitentiary in Tarot, Indiana, also the home of the federal death chamber. Bowden. However, isn't. Due to his medical issues, 
In June 2016, Bolden was moved to a unique medical prison in Springfield, Missouri. The Canadian government did not find out about Bolden before 2012, six years in his confinement on death row. However, his father Roberts, was not part of young Bolden's life. The father he ended up was Lavallee Bolden, yet another U.S. serviceman. When Robert was around two years old, his mother Decker moved to St. Louis to be with Lavallee. It is in this climate that the 58-year-old Robert Bolden fights for his life in court. Canada is included in Bolden's case. Lawyers kept by Canada have filed court documents in support of his appeals in recent decades, which likewise argue what Canada might have done. Had the government been advised of his case back in 2002, he is the only Canadian on U.S. federal death row. Bolden was born in Canada and lived there until he was one year old. He was then brought to the United States and lived here continuously thereafter. Correspondence and other documents from the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service established that Bolden, his attorneys, and the government were aware of Bolden's Canadian citizenship before trial. However, the government did not give Bolden notice of any rights he had under the Vienna Convention, nor did it notify the Canadian Consulate of the criminal proceedings against Bolden. Bolden claims that these omissions resulted in the denial of his constitutional rights. Bolden could have presented this claim on direct appeal, but he failed to do so. Therefore, the claim is procedural barred unless cause and prejudice are shown, even if Bolden could establish cause for the default, he cannot establish that he was prejudiced. The Vienna Convention is an international treaty, of which the United States and Canada are among the member countries. The Convention stipulates consular protocol between member nations. Article 36 of the Vienna Convention, on consular relations and optional protocol on disputes, applies to communication between the consular officers of a country the sending state, and its nationals in a country, the receiving state, where a consular post of the sending state has been established. None of this is uncommon on U.S. death row, a desperately inept crime, a tragic death, a long court journey. What is less common is that Robert Bolden is a Canadian. He's the only Canadian on U.S. federal death row. There is one other Canadian, Ronald Allen Smith, an Albertan, who is facing execution by the state of Montana. They are just two of the 123 foreign nationals, men and women from 34 countries, on federal and state death rows across the United States. Thank you for watching Death Row. Today's shout out goes to Brenda Middleton and Lviza 541. Thank you to all my supporters.